thank you hello learners good morning welcome to today's lesson this is KU TV Elimu Live I am teacher Mwangi Michael from the KBA group of schools so I welcome you here to learn with us because we give the best today it's on a Monday the third of May 2021 and I welcome you to our English lesson today. So it's English. It's class 6, 7 and 8 where I will be talking of two issues. Uh, from my inbox, the last time I was here, I found some of you, like the learners, asking me to come and explain the difference between some pronouns. So I'll start by that. Then later we go to prepositions. Today it's the third of May. 2021. Well, now in English you find that we have eight figures of speech. That is the nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. As I said from my inbox, I found some learners wanting me to come and give the differences in the personal pronouns, that is the, 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 the two groups of personal pronouns. And that is where I will start. Remember a pronoun is a word that comes or starts uh, in place of a noun or a noun phrase. And they refer to nouns that have already been mentioned or those that need not to be mentioned at all in a sentence. Now, for the personal pronouns, they are grouped into two. Personal pronouns. From the word person. These personal pronouns are grouped into two uh, according to how they are used in a given sentence. We have the first group known as the subjective pronouns. The subjective pronouns can also be referred to as personal pronouns. The second group is known as the objective pronouns. Now, where do we get these pronouns? The subjective pronouns and the objective pronouns. You get in a sentence, for a complete English sentence, we must have the subject in that sentence with the doer. Then we must have the object in which the object becomes the receiver. For example, let me give an example in a sentence. Kamau milked. Kamau milked the cows. Now, there are two nouns in this sentence. We have the first one, Kamau, then we have the cows. Here, you realize Kamau is the doer of the action. Therefore, Kamau is a subject in that sentence. Then we have the cows that received the action. Remember, milking is the action. So we have the cows that received the action of being milked. Therefore, they will form the object in a sentence. Now, I used nouns, not pronouns, to give the difference between the subject and the object in a sentence. Now, learners, when we come to personal pronouns, we have the personal pronouns that are, can already be used as a subject in a given sentence. And we also have the personal pronouns that can only be used as objects in a given sentence. The personal pronouns are 12 in number. And the 12, let me use this side. We have the subjective pronouns. 
and we have the objective. We have the, those two groups. I'll draw a table to give the difference that I want the learners to get. Remember, you can interact with us through our WhatsApp number, all our social media platforms, KUTV Kenya, and you get us there. For any questions and all, any clarifications, you can text us through the WhatsApp number that is on your screen. Let's continue. As I said, the personal pronouns are 12. They are grouped into subjective and objective. That means that the ones I list on this side of the subjectives can only be used as the subjects in a given sentence. The ones that I group on the objective side can also be, can only be used as objects in a given sentence. Remember I said they are 12. So we start with the first one, I, followed by we, I, followed by we, followed by they, followed by he, she, it, and you. If you get those, there are seven in number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means we have seven, seven subjective pronouns. When now the subjective pronouns must change into the objective pronoun. Remember this is in regardless to the position of the verb. I'll come and explain that in a, in a, in a while. So I changes to me in the objective. We changes to us in the objective. They changes to them in the objective. He changes to him in the objective. She changes to her in the objective. It and you remain the same. It and you remain the same. Now, you find, I said they are 12 in number, but the group here consists of the, seven, uh, of the 14, because eight will remain as eight, and you will remain as you. How do you use this uh, personal pronouns in a given sentence? I want us to construct some sentences here, and we get to understand what we mean. I have a sentence like Dutch I have a sentence like Dutch visited us last week Dutch visited us last week there is something I want to explain here. We have maybe the choices given are uh, they and them. They and them. Now, you must check the position of the verb. My verb is here. So we have any pronoun that comes before the verb, you use a subjective pronoun. Any pronoun that comes after the verb, you use an objective pronoun. From our list there, you realize the choices given here is they and them. Now, which one should be correct? It is they. Because they is a subjective pronoun and we require the doer of the action in this sentence. Therefore, the correct key there will be they. I said this in legal address to the position of the verb. If the, the gap or the pronoun comes after the verb, we now use an objective pronoun. For example, you have a question like... Uh, Maybe I can even change this one. We were visited 
Let me use a different pen. We were visited by Dutch. Then we need a full stop there. I want us to use the same, same choices, they and them. I said you look the position of the verb. After, after the verb, you use an objective pronoun. Before the verb, you use a subjective pronoun. Now, we were visited by that. The pronoun required to be used here, the personal pronoun, is after the verb. Actually, it is the receiver of the action that we are interested in here. So the correct key will be, we were visited by them. We were visited by them. That one gives the differences between all the differences in usage between the subjective and the objective pronouns. Let me give other examples of subjective pronouns. Number two, they buy sugar from this shop. They buy sugar from this shop. Now, the verb in that sentence is buy. The verb in that sentence is buy. Therefore, the pronoun that we are required to use is they, because they represents the doer. Number, the third one, and a very, very uh, important one. Let me actually write that one down. There was a reason why I kept it there. Dutch, it says, Dutch and Dutch. Dutch and Dutch are friends. Now, you are required to choose from the following. We have she, he, her, and him. You have those as your choices. And you are required to fill with either of the two here. What are you supposed to do? You are supposed to eliminate the objective pronouns, and then you remain with the subjective pronouns. From our list here, you realize she and he are the subjective pronouns. Well, her and him are the objective pronouns. In our sentence here, al is a verb. Remember, a, a, a verb is a word that describes an action or a certain status. So here, it describes the status of being friends. So, so the verb to use, not the verb, the pronoun to use in these two gaps should be a, the, the two, because they are subjective pronouns giving our answer as she and he. It is wrong to say she and him. It is wrong to say she and her because you are only required to use subjective pronouns at that stage. The last example of a subjective pronoun, they and I protect ourselves against coronavirus. They and I protect ourselves against coronavirus. Other examples of objective pronouns, objective pronouns. Actually, what I've done, I have changed the sentences that we had into a uh, passive to give the differences. One, last week, we were visited by him. You realize the him here shows the receiver of the action. Number two, sugar is bought from this shop by them. Them there is an objective pronoun. Number three, the strangers are they and him. That means we don't know them. So the strangers are they and him, not they. It should be them and him, not they. It should be them. Protection against coronavirus is practiced by them and me. Not better. This is a very important point for learners to note that this is the same rule used when changing sentences from passive to active voice and vice versa. From passive to active voice and vice versa. Let me demonstrate using one example what I mean by that. That this is the same rule that is used when changing sentences from uh, passive voice to active or from active to passive. That is what I mean by vice versa. An example, we we bought crudes. We bought crudes. That is a sentence. The we here is 
subjective. Bought is the action. Crowds is the receiver. So this sentence is active. It is in the active voice. Now, when changing this sentence from the active voice to the passive voice, you start with the receiver here. So it, it, you start with crudes. Crudes. So crudes were bought by now the gap here. You realize the, exa the examiners will bring the same sentence. Sentence, crudes were bought by we. And that is wrong. Because here, our pronoun now changes from being subjective to objective. Therefore, crudes were bought by the we here, as from the table that we had, we changes to us in the objective. Therefore, crudes were bought by us. If I had used I, I bought crudes, it would be crudes were bought by me, not crudes were bought by I. That is what we mean when we say changing from active to passive voice. Now, for the runner who had asked that question, I hope it is now clearly answered. I get to what we are calling prepositions. Prepositions. The word prepositions comes from the word position. Position. Where is something? So a preposition is a word or a group of words used before a noun, pronoun, or a noun phrase to show direction. So the position, the direction, to show time, to show place, to show location, to show some special relationships or maybe to introduce an object. Examples of prepositions, we have in, at, on, of, to, and others. And prepositions in English are highly idiomatic. I have a list of 100 important prepositions list. I just need to give examples of prepositions. Then I'll break down into the groups of them. Examples we have about, above, Abroad is a preposition, according to, across, after, against, ago, ahead of, very many, beneath, beside, besides. And let me discuss that one. Uh, actually, besides is not. So we have beside and besides. Here. <laughs> One is a preposition, and the other one is a conjunction of additional information. Now, besides is a preposition. Get that one clear. Well, besides is a conjunction of additional information. It gives us more about something. So learners, you should get the difference between the two. They are actually highly tested. Beside is a preposition. That means, actually, it means next to. That is what it means. Well, besides is a conjunction of additional information. Ex other examples of conjunctions of additional information, furthermore, in addition to, moreover. So they are in the same group. Get the difference. Other examples. Uh, we have in front of, remember there are three words, in front of, in lieu of, in place of, in spite of. Those are three words, despite, one word, next to, of, uh, on account of, on behalf of. So we have very many, very many examples of prepositions. Now, the prepositions are now grouped into five distinct groups. We have the first group that is known as simple prepositions. Simple prepositions. The second group, double prepositions. The third group, compound prepositions. The fourth group, participle 
prepositions, and the last one is phrase prepositions. I said the prepositions are now further grouped into five distinct groups. That is simple prepositions, double prepositions, compound prepositions, participle prepositions, and phrase prepositions. I start with the first one, the simple prepositions. These simple prepositions are commonly used to describe a location, time, or place. Towards the end of this lesson, I'll come to give the differences between the prepositions of time and place. Actually, the ones that are commonly, uh, commonly misplaced by learners. Examples or the examples of simple prepositions include at, for, in, of. We remember we have two ofs. We have of, double f, and we have of, single f. For example, the word shy. The word shy takes preposition of, but which of these? Is it the, 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 the one with the double F or the one with the single F? Simple, the one with the single F. Many times learners <laughs> write the preposition of for shy with the double F. That is wrong. We have other words that are used with the double F. For, for shy, you go with a single F. Examples of sentences that have used simple prepositions. For example, he sat on the chair. He sat on the chair. I want to talk of the word sit first because of some learners. So the past tense of the word sit is sat. Or you can also say seated, spelled S, S E A T E D. Learners should know that we have no such a word in English. In as much as we are told that when we have a word like stop, a word ending with a vowel, not a vowel, a consonant then preceded by a vowel, you double the last letters. For the word sit, we don't have seated with double T. So the past tense of sit is sat or seated. You choose the, the, the two. Remember this sit, S-I-T, is a verb, it is an action. Then we have sit, S-E-A-T. This one is a noun, get the difference. But the past tense of sit, S-I-T, can be sat, S-A-T, or seated, S-E-A-T-E-D. So he sat on the chair. Now, it shows the position of something. If the question was, he sat that the armchair, get the differences here, learners, we have sit Dutch chair, Dutch a chair, and we have sit Dutch an armchair. Now, a chair is a seat without the arms. Well, an armchair is a seat with the arms. So for this one, we say sit on a chair. Then for this one, the armchair, we also we say sit in an armchair. Get the difference, highly tested. KCP 2018 tested something like uh, we are playing that shade. We are praying that shade. And we use an, a preposition, that the shade, not a, 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 an article. We are praying that shade. Another example, we are praying that a shady tree. This one, I'm using this to explain that the noun use is very important. So we are praying that shade, is it under the shade or in the shade? The correct answer should be, we are praying in the shade. You take, for example, this is our tree here. That is our tree. That is our tree. So where is the shade? Maybe this is where the shade is. This is our shade. So the learners are praying inside here. These are the pupils praying here, inside 
the shade. So we are praying in the shade. If you check the, the second one, shady tree, we are not concentrating with the shade. We are actually concentrating on the tree. So we say we are praying under a shady tree. Get that difference. There is some more milk in the fridge. Very simple. She was hiding under the table, under there. The cat jumped off the counter, the off with the double F. Uh, she drew the picture with a crayon. She drew the picture with a crayon. That is the imprint that she was using. I need to give a clarification there. We light with, now the imprint, with a pen, or maybe light with a pencil. Then you can light on paper. You can also light in ink. So get the difference. It's not always that uh, the, the preposition used is the same. You check the implement used. So light, you check actually the noun. Light with a pen. Light on paper. Light in ink. Those are examples. We get to the second group of prepositions. They are the double prepositions. Double prepositions. And they are two simple prepositions used together, often indicating direction. Some examples are into. Remember, into shows motion. The cat, or maybe let's say the swimmer, dived into the pool. That into shows there is direction, there is movement actually. So the swimmer or the diver dived. The diving is an action of movement. So dived into the pool, upon, onto, out of, from, within, and uh, etc. Examples, once upon a time. What do I mean actually by double prepositions? You find that it's two prepositions combined to make one. For example, upon. For example, upon, we have two prepositions here. That is why we are calling them double. Up and on, combined to make one preposition. Within, two prepositions here, with and in, combined to make one preposition. Into, two prepositions here, in and to, combined to make one preposition. And I say this one is very tricky. Mostly it is used when there is movement. Examples, the baby climbed onto the table. It's up to us to find the answer. The loud music came from within the stadium. The caterpillar turned into, you see there is movement there, the turning shows from the other levels in science that you are taught how maybe a caterpillar develops from egg, lava, pupa, adult. So the caterpillar turned into, there is the movement there into a butterfly. We get to the third group known as compound prepositions. And these ones consist of two or more words. Two or more words, usually a simple preposition, the ones we discussed first, and another word to convey location or a given idea. They include, in addition to, get in, then to, on behalf of, we have the preposition on and off, in the middle of, we have the preposition in and off, and etc., etc., etc. Remember we have said that they consist of two or more words, usually a simple preposition, and another word to convey location or a given idea. Examples, I attended the meeting on behalf of my company. So you are representing there. He was given, uh, he, um, he has gym classes. Spelling of the word gym, learners, is G-Y-M. That is the correct spelling of the word gym. So he has gym classes 
in addition to his regular classes today. You take that word in addition to, we have two prepositions, in, then to. Remember, addition is the other word we are talking of. My car is parked in front of three words. Learners, be very much aware, the examiners tend to bring in front as one word. They should be three words. In front should be two words. So there is nothing like this. It should be in, then space, front. Very interesting. The weather will be good this weekend, according to Tom. Aside from singing, she also plays the piano from the bar. We get to the other group, the fourth group of prepositions, known as participo prepositions. Now, these prepositions have endings such as ed or ing. They include during, considering, concerning, provided etc. For example, she is interested in anything concerning horses. The dog kept following him alone. The principal, remember the principal we are talking of here is P-L-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. -I -I the principal, that is a noun, was asking questions regarding her behavior. The principal is the head of an institution. Considering his age, he didn't get a job. The last one, he was frustrated at the situation. We get to the last group of prepositions, known as phrase prepositions, and they are also referred to as prepositional phrases. They include a preposition, get this, a preposition, an object, and, ob and the object's modifier. Notice the use of the article there. The, the article there, that means we are referring to the object that has already been mentioned. They include uh, on time, at home, before classes, and on the from. Example, I will go to the conference on time. On time. That is a phrase, a, a, a phrase preposition, on time. Meaning what? Meaning, let me explain what I mean. When I say on time, we have a preposition here, on here. What the, the use of this preposition makes the statement a phrase with a hidden meaning. So on time, meaning what? You will not be late. Very important. For example, yesterday we had the Manchester game versus Liverpool was postponed after Lion after fans li lioted. We have to postpone there, which means that it was scheduled for a later date. Let me give the difference between the two. We have put out, put off, and we also have call off. To put out, is to extinguish a fire. To put off is to postpone, maybe to a later date. For example, yesterday's game that was between Manchester United and Liverpool was postponed. That means it will be prayed at a later date. What we have to call off means to cancel. That means it won't happen. Another example, he succeeded with a retro help. She left Monday footprints. Footprints is one word on the clean, uh, on the clean from. And the last one, according to Carlos, uh, according to Carlos wishes, our wedding will be private. Actually, it should be Carlos written as that, meaning the wish belongs to Caro. Now, very, very important here, learners. We have what we call commonly confused prepositions of time. We have three prepositions of time that are highly tested. That is preposition at, preposition in, and preposition 
on. I want us to go together, follow the table that is being displayed on your screen, and you'll get to understand the differences between the three prepositions. When we talk of preposition at, it is used for precise times. For example, you can say at 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. is a precise time. At 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock is a defined time. It's precise. You can say at midday, exactly at midday, a precise time. At the weekend, you see, it is a defined time. So preposition at is used for precise times. Preposition in is used for months, get that? For months, years, very, very important, decades, centuries, and long periods of time. I repeat, preposition in, remember we are talking of the three prepositions in regard dress to time. Later on we shall take, take the three prepositions in regard dress to place. So we start with time. So preposition in is used for months, years, decades, centuries, and long periods of time. For example, I can say in 16 years time. That is a long period of time, 16 years time. So in 16 years time, check how it is punctuated. We have in 16 years, the word years has an apostrophe, time. Maybe if I want to say uh, in a specific year, in the year 2021, in the year 1991. That means that whatever you want to talk of happened within that period of the year. For example, I can say that the coronavirus, uh, the first case of coronavirus was reported in Kenya in the year 2020. That means within the year 2020, as a certain time not defined, there was the reporting of the first case of the coronavirus by the government. You can also use preposition in for months. You can say we celebrate Easter in the month of April. You can also say we celebrate uh, Labor Day in the month of May. You are not specific. So it is a certain date that is not defined in your sentence during that month of May. In the 1970s, in the 2020s, in the 1980s, very, very important, in the 70s. You can also say in the afternoon, in the uh, in the Christmas holiday, remember this is a holiday, we have the Christmas day and the Christmas holiday. So in the Christmas holiday, very, very important. Now we get to preposition on that is used for days and dates. Now here you get to be specific. On a summer evening, on Christmas day, get the difference? The first one we said in um, in the Christmas holiday. So it's during that wrong period of the holiday. So at a certain time there, in a certain time. But on, when we are specific, the very Christmas day that is celebrated by Christians on every 25th day of the month of uh, December, we say on Christmas day, you are specific. We say, for example, the English lessons from KUTV Erimu Live are aired on Monday. You are specific on Monday, very specific, that particular day. Then we have uh, on holiday. If I want to be very, very precise, I can say that Labor Day, Labor Day is celebrated on the 1st of May. I am very specific to the very, very specific date. On the first day, very important, I repeat that. I start with a, a preposition at. It is used for precise times. At southern, maybe at the beginning, at the same time, precise. So you have not defined the time. Preposition in is used for months, years, decades, centuries, and long periods of time. While preposition on is used for days and dates. Very, very important. I now compare the three prepositions in regard dress to time and date. Comparisons of at, in, on, 
in legal address to time and date. Therefore, there is a table that will be displayed there. We, we need us to move together. I have the three prepositions. From that table, you can see I have preposition at, in, and on. Then the first, uh, the second column, we have time. And the third one uh, is place. Now, we use at for a precise time. And we use at for a point and institutions. Very important. For example, when we say at a precise time, we say at 7 o'clock, at, uh, at noon, at bedtime, at sunrise, precise time. But when we come to place, we can say at the corner. Remember we have said uh, when we are using at to mean place, uh, we go for a point, a certain point, specific, at a point and institutions, at a corner, at the bus stop. Maybe you can say at crossroads. That means that person is confused. Uh, at the bottom of the page, very important. Preposition in. Here, we use in, in legal address to time, uh, for months, years, centuries, and long periods. But in legal address to place, we use in for an encrossed place and geographical regions. For example, let us start with in referring to time. We say in July, um, in 2013, you are referring to time. But when we come to place, I can say in the garden. That means what? I, that garden is an enclosed place. I can say in a box, the box, box is enclosed. In my pocket, if something is my, in my pocket, it is in an enclosed place. In a car, the car is enclosed. Very, very important. Then the last one, on. In regard address to time and place, we use on for days and dates in regard address to time, as I discussed earlier. But regard address to place, on, is used for a service and public transport. For a service. Service. Uh, remember the, the different spellings of service? We are referring to the service S-U-R-F-A-C-E. So, for example, on the wall, Maybe if you have a portrait, the portrait was hung on the wall. The teacher is lighting on the chalkboard. Very, very important. We have others on the front and the list. That gives us the differences between prepositions of time and place in regard to the three prepositions, at, in, and on. Now, from the table that we have there, we have a table of a summary of prepositions and places. They are detailed out. So we have pre preposition by, words that are used by that preposition. Preposition in, on, at, and out. For example, you say by degrees, you say by air, by sea, by rad, by chance. For example, when you come to in, you say in time, in demand, in debt. Very, very important. So that means the words that have been displayed there must take that preposition. We get to the last thing, advanced prepositions. Now, when an adjective is followed by a preposition, they are referred to as advanced prepositions. And advanced prepositions are also known as phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs have a hidden meaning and are often confusing. Now, Phrasal verbs are formed when an adjective is followed by a preposition. Examples, we have the following. Examples of phrasal verbs. Uh, let me give some examples here. We have an example like afraid. Afraid. Afraid takes the preposition of, giving us uh, a phrase of verb, afraid of. Other, other examples, maybe we have the word deal. Now, the word deal takes two prepositions. It matters with what you are talking of. We, you can deal in and deal with. You deal in something and you deal with somebody. 
If you check from your dictionaries, you find them ab abbreviating as that. So you deal in something, you deal with somebody. When you deal in something, here you are trading. For example, Kamau deals Dutch textile. Fiber. That means that whatever Kamau is doing is trading. He is selling. Therefore, we say Kamau deals, and the examiner will bring the two. Actually, the examiner will bring in and with. It is upon you to decide which one to use. Is it something he is dealing uh, uh, with, uh, um, in, or is it somebody he is dealing with? So Kamau deals Dutch textile fiber. That means this is something he trades. So Kamau deals in textile fiber. Now, from today's lessons, learners, we, let me have a, a, a look up of what we have gone through. One, we talked of different uh, uses of personal pronouns and we grouped them into two. Now, from the personal pronouns, I talked of when to use them, and we said the most important thing is you check the position of the verb in a given sentence, and we had the table there. The other thing, the other thing is from there we checked the prepositions. The prepositions that we have discussed, them, uh, they were in various groups, five. They are grouped, grouped in five groups. And therefore, learners, you should be in a position to know which word to use using which preposition. Another trick that examiners use, we have words that do not take prepositions, words like discuss. There is nothing like discuss about. The word enter, if you are getting into a building, it's long to say enter into. So it is important to check the words that do not require to have a preposition. The words are uh, leech. You cannot say we leached at or we leached in. No, because the word leech does not take a preposition. So you check, analyze the questions properly, see where the examiner is trying to trick you. Is he referring in that given sentence, for example, in the word that I gave deal, is he referring to something or somebody? Well. You can, remember, you can catch these lessons uh, on KUTV Live every Monday to Friday. Also on our social media platforms, we are there. And if you have any question, you can convey it through our WhatsApp number that has been there on your screen. I hope you enjoyed the lessons. I hope you learned a lot. And you are going to use this. Uh, learning experiences that you, we give you here at uh, KU TV uh, in your day-to-day -day learning back in your schools. I have been your teacher, Teacher Mwangi Michael, wishing you the very best in this week. And tune in for, tune up for all the other lessons that are going to be brought to you live by Elim Live KU TV. I have been your teacher, Teacher Mwangi. It's bye-bye for now.